Dear friends, Christ is the wisdom of God who came from on high and became the servant of all, thus giving us an example to follow. He places a child as a model for one who wishes to enter the kingdom of God. Let us learn from Jesus the virtue of humility and ask him the grace of being childlike, always welcoming the little ones. Our entrance him, blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves, I shall not this mass we shall be praying for all your personal intentions it is the 25th Sunday in ordinary time in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with, with your spirit. spirit my dear brothers and sisters let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glorify God together.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom Ungodly men said, Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. Let us see if his words are true. And let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's son, he will help him and will, de and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture, that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial for his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. For, according to what he says, he will be protected. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to God's word is, Behold, the Lord is the upholder of my life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fight among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions.
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. through the gospel to ob obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to my glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus and his disciples went on from the mountain and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. But when he is killed, after three days he will rise. For they did not understand the saying. And were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent. For on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the things that I really, really, really miss the moment the lockdown began and our churches closed was celebrating Mass on Sundays, either for children or regular Masses, and inviting the children while the recessional hymn was on to come forward for a blessing. And they would run like little mice from all over the church and so sweetly just come up with hands folded and ask and receive a blessing. And I still remember one child, the moment I just put my hand up, gave me a nice hi-fi and ran back again into the pews. A couple of weeks ago I was in the church compound and while I was there, a couple of children came running up to me for a blessing. And uh, as usual, I gave a blessing to both the children and I put my hand up like this to make a hi-fi. The little girl quickly gave me the high five because she knew what it meant. The little boy stopped. He turned around and looked at his father. And then his father said, go ahead. And then he gave me a high five. And then I asked the father what happened. And he said, no, I told my son, because of the coronavirus, you are not to touch anything or anyone. And he was strictly following his father's instructions. That's little children as we have it for us, my dear brothers and sisters. In today's gospel, we hear, and as they're sitting there, Jesus says to his disciples, What were you discussing about on the road? Ashamed, they admit that they were discussing who was the greatest among them. Who was number one? Who was in the first place? And Jesus' answer in today's gospel was going to teach them a lesson. Not only for the disciples who are with him in, at, in that house, but perhaps for all of us for all eternity. And this is what Jesus is saying to them. If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and servant of all. And then he took a child and he put the child in their midst. And we know what little children are like. 
children have their many many difficulties exasperations and they are impetuous and perhaps even demanding sometimes but we know that children are basically so innocent children trust children have hope children love very easily so easily that parents have to warn their children not to go after strangers who smile and offer them some kind of affection children are spontaneous children find it very easy to forgive children do not really have too much trouble forgiving people and accepting people other little children as maybe we adults have who actually move out sometimes of our society out of our neighborhoods so that we are not associated with some of the people that we are afraid we'll end up being connected with perhaps some of you my dear brothers and sisters might have heard the story about a race that actually took place it was a true story it was a race in a town where all the children of that town had their own racing day and of course they had a special race that particular day for the handicapped children and so after the other kids who were all hale and hearty had finished their race they began the race for the handicapped children there were seven runners in the race for this handicapped and they all started out and they began kind of moving as fast as they could depending on their handicaps and they were all going along well and they got about a third or about a half way and one of these seven children fell down on the track and the others ran on a little bit ahead and the boy who fell down was banging his head on the ground because he was probably so ashamed of what had happened but all of a sudden almost as one the others the other six just turned around and they ran back to the little boy they picked him up they shouldered him one under each shoulder and got him to his feet and all seven began to go to the finish line and each waited for the other and they all crossed the finish line hand in hand all at the same time and there was a great silence in the crowd they'd never seen a race like this this would be a race to end all races and they knew what had happened and there was a great cheer that went up and a great feeling of yes this is perhaps the proper way to run a race the story my dear brothers and sisters would be a story that jesus if perhaps he had heard it would have told his disciples we are not in a race for prizes in life we are in life not merely for achieving not merely for becoming wealthy not merely for becoming noble not really for becoming all different and wearing the clothes of the well to do and people who are considered a rung above everybody else we are here as jesus says to serve the word in hebrew the word in greek and the old translating kindly for us into serve says you must become slaves because in that world those who served were always slaves and those who were slaves served everyone the handicapped children i think got it right they went to serve each other because they needed each other and this is the way they will learn to love each other this is the way they will learn to care for one another and when they learn to care for each other then it doesn't really matter if you are handicapped because you have support and love and caring and all the people and all the famous celebrities of the world would give everything they have to be able to say that they are loved and that they love that they are cared for and that they are appreciated not for what they might dream they might be but because as human beings this is their right jesus has got to tell the disciples that you must become servants and what you serve and when you serve you must give everything you have when you serve and not really look for anything in return and why does he say this because this is the way god is god serves and this is the way that jesus is trying to be as a human being giving his father service by serving everyone that he came in contact with 
irrespective of gender, caste, or perhaps even religion. So the great lesson that Mark is telling us in today's Gospel is that we must remember that we are not here merely to achieve, although achievement is an important thing. We're not here to be in competition with each other, although perhaps we might enjoy something competitive now and then. But we are here to become conscious of the needs of the people around us and how well we might be able to serve them. Because it is only in serving, Jesus says, we enter into the very heart of God. And what Jesus is saying is, I have come to change the world. I've come to change the attitudes of people. And in this way, my dear brothers and sisters, each one of us perhaps will truly have the heart of Jesus. One that really came to serve. That which each one of us is being invited to become a servant. A self-sacrificing servant. And then the world will have such new life. All of us will find the proper place in our proper home. And the fulfillment of the dream that all of us are born with. For the dream you dream is God's dream. And the house you build is God's house. And the love with which you love each other is God's love. And I think that really is the heart of the matter. We profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance to the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Learning from Jesus the lesson of humility, let us now place our petitions before him. And our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. All together. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that in administering to the faithful, they may never seek their own glory and work for common welfare. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that as we go about life, we may not be preoccupied with ourselves, but remain attentive to what is happening around us and thus reach out to the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that endowed by the wisdom of God, which is pure, peaceable, and producing good gifts, we may make our decisions and judgments, which may be beyond reproach. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that all of us in this assembly may be enlightened by Christ, the wisdom of God, so that in a childlike simplicity and humility, we may truly prove to be a people trustworthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intentions we now pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
God, our loving Father, your Son, Jesus, taught us the way of humility and obedience by his death on the cross. Grant that following his example, we may become his true disciples. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I offer to him, we offer you. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through their heavenly desires and mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we've been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. It rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession, in your presence be the life for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis R. Pope and Oswald R. Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Now before, before you take away the sins of the world, world grant, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. I come in him, make me a servant. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, 
for a healing of those affected for the victims and their families we thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine we pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic we pray that the vaccine be available for all our people even the poor and those in rural areas we pray for doctors nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts we pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit and may the peace and blessing of almighty god the father the son and the holy spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever amen, amen. go and announce the gospel of the lord and thanks, thanks be to god. god our recession of him we see the troubles in our lives Oh